This is a faulty light switch, and as you can see, I've already removed its front cover and pulled out its mounting plate that was screwed on its metallic junction box as a first step in replacing or fixing it. Normally, all that's needed is to just replace the switch itself and reconnect the wires. However, since this entire system is four decades old, I could no longer find any replacement parts today that are compatible with this setup. Now, I've already searched online and went to multiple stores and found nothing that matches the dimensions and specs for this system. And it appears that the modern standard is a little bit bigger, so I'm left with no other choice but to replace the entire system. But herein lies the next challenge. How do you fit a bigger and better system, this cover and mounting plate, along with its switch and the matching junction box, into that smaller concrete hole? Okay, I'm gonna be upfront with you. Replacing a metallic junction box that's fused inside a concrete hole is no easy task. Unlike PVC plastic, you can't just break metal into fragments and chip it off piece by piece where it's seated. So before you commit to this solution, you have got to be sure that this is your only option. But how can you be certain that this is the way to go? Well, you have to go back to the two common symptoms of a faulty lighting system. When you flick the switch on, either the bulb doesn't light up, or if it does, it constantly flickers. But you might think, aren't these the same symptoms of a faulty light bulb or a faulty light socket? Yes, you are correct. And because they are easier and cheaper to fix, you need to troubleshoot those first before even considering the light switch. So have I followed the right troubleshooting steps? Yes, I first focused on the light bulb. Watch this video if you want to learn how by clicking the info card on the upper right. Then I moved on to the light socket and checked if it was still okay, which I'm sure it was because I fixed it myself in this video. If you don't see the info cards on the upper right, I have included the links to these videos in the description below. So I've already done my due diligence and that's why I'm 99% sure today that this light switch system is the root cause of the symptoms. But before we begin, I have three caveats. One. Our home was built in the 1980s and probably the reason why we only see wires that are both black compared to today's electrical wiring color codes which are brown for the hot wire, blue for the neutral wire, and green and yellow for the ground wire. 2. Electrical wiring codes are constantly updated. The standard colors of years ago may not be the same today and today's standards might be different years from now. And 3. Different countries have different electrical codes for residential and industrial applications. Note that I am based in the Philippines. Okay, with those out of the way, let's begin the actual fix by cutting off these solid wires to easily detach the old switch and mounting plate. Even if I had already switched off the circuit breaker that supplies power to this area and was wearing thick rubber slippers, I still wrapped electrical tape around the tips of the wires as an extra layer of safety. You don't want these wires making direct contact to each other. To mark the dimensions of this new junction box onto the hole, I trace its width and height like so. Then trace the outline with masking tape. This is to minimize chipping off concrete along the periphery because we're using a jackhammer and a chisel to dislodge the metal junction box from the hole. This step will really test your patience and sense of precision. Almost there, just a little more. Ah, 
at last, we finally got it out. In real time, it took us about 30 minutes and a lot of sweat. Now we have a better view of the hole and how much concrete we still had to chisel off to match the dimensions of our replacement junction box. After expanding the hole big enough, it's time to dry fit this junction box. Simply pry out the cover on one end. Now the diameter of the metal pipe will not fit here, so I need to make this a little bigger. Okay, let's test fit this. And after a minute of trying, it's obvious that the metal pipe is hitting the back of the box, making it impossible to push this assembly all the way in. As a workaround, I needed to reshape the hole like this. Okay, let's try again. Almost there. I just need to expand the hole here at the back a few millimeters more. Okay, okay, I think it now fits. And all I needed to do is lightly tap the sides to make the lip of the junction box flushed with the wall. And after a quick pull test, everything feels stable. Good. With a flathead screwdriver, I separate the light switch cover from its mounting plate. Then dry fit the mounting plate on the junction box to check if it's going to be flush against the wall. And it is. Also, we can now peel off the masking tape. While there were certain spots on the wall that were still chipped off, this could have been a lot worse without the masking tape in the first place. At any rate, these spots can easily be restored with skim coat and repainting over them. Now it's time to install the light switch itself to its mounting plate. This is done from the back by aligning the light switch notches on one side and then pressing the opposite side until it snaps into place. Good. Now we connect the wires to these opposing terminal holes. With its insulation stripped about half an inch from its tip, we simply insert the bare solid wire into a terminal hole until it catches. Give it a few tugs to check if the wire is locked in place. Then we do the same procedure on the other wire. But this time, inserting it in the opposing terminal hole. Now we finesse the cables inside the junction box, being careful they are not twisted too much nor caught in between anything that can compromise their connection. Then we screw in the mounting plate onto the corresponding holes on the junction box. Tighten the screws alternately so you can do micro adjustments to keep the plate leveled. But wait, what exactly caused our old light switch or any other light switch to fail in the first place? What are the common and not so common causes and what preventive measures can we do? Well, that's for another video. In the meantime, let's do a quick test before wrapping up. Good, this lighting system is now working. You can even use a spirit level to check if the mounting plate is at a perfect right angle.
finally comes the hardest step, installing the cover. You simply snap it in place, like so. Be sure to toggle the switch a few more times to check if it's performing consistently. And with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.